Congress, I can't thank you all enough for being here. We have over 200 people registered for this event and the buzz in the room is palpable. So thank you for being here. Um, so in my spare time, I'm actually a soccer referee and some of you have endured my wrath. Um, and so if you don't behave, there's yellow cards, okay? And if it goes really awry, there's red cards. But with red cards, you need to know where the exits are. And part of my chemical background is you should always have a safety plan. So please check around the room and look for your nearest exit in case we have an emergency. I can't imagine we'll have one, but you can't be uh, too, uh, too careful, right? Also, the restrooms are located through this set of double doors, and I believe it's to your left. At least I found the women's. Where's the men's room? Anyone? Okay. All right, well, let's get this uh, event started. Again, we, we appreciate your support of uh, chamber programming and your interest in local government, and uh, we're going to go there today for sure. Um, would you believe that our chamber today has 560 members and we plan to grow that number to over 600 this year? Um, so, yeah. Uh, we have some folks who just joined last month um, from eDocs. Give us a wave, please. Where are you all? Yeah, thank you. On the other end of the spectrum, we have folks like uh, Peoples, who we just celebrated their 45th year with the Chamber. Ed Palumbo, where are you? You're here somewhere. You're hiding. Okay. Congratulations. We have a real big span of folks. I'll take a moment to recognize two folks who work with uh, me at the Chamber and they move mountains. Uh, Michelle Musselman is our Event and Programming Director. Give us a wave, Michelle. She has such a unique uh, ability to decorate. I, I need her at my house, but uh, everything is so well organized. I appreciate you pulling this all together. And then uh, many, many, many of you know Caitlin Paletti. Caitlin's been uh, five years with our chamber, so let's give her a hand for her milestone. So Michelle has event and programming, Caitlin has membership and marketing, and then the old line on the job description that says, and everything else that we assign you. So, uh, major chamber events coming up. So, would you take a look on the back of your program are all the events, major events that we plan to run here at the chamber in 2020. So, that's the back of your program. And then, um, in particular, we have a beautiful little card on your table that you can't ignore because it has a cute little um, water theme, right? So, that is our annual gala. So let me ask you to do me a favor. You have in front of you a little notebook, compliments of SMGG, and we'll go there in a moment, but in your little notebook, I need you to write this down. Okay, now I'm also a college professor in my spare time, and so this is the part where we dictate to the students what you need to do. So get your note card ready. Valentine's Day is right around the corner, all right? Your best Valentine gift to your special other is a spot at the annual gala. Where else can you go and have dueling pianos, a steel drum band, company with all these people, and you met at least one new person today. So please join us at our gala in March, all right? Also on the uh, schedule is the congressional breakfast, which will happen in April. And last but not least, Sticking with the nautical theme, the summer cruise will be back on the Ohio River. We had a fantastic response last year and we're gonna do it again. So if on Valentine's Day you just have other plans, write down your little notebook, join the summer cruise, it's your staycation. You don't need to go anywhere. Stay in Beaver County, join us on the river. All right. We can't do uh, this work without our sponsors, uh, but I also wanna take just a, a brief moment to um, just ask for your thoughts and prayers for um, the owner of the Fez, John Thomas. Uh, I learned earlier this morning that his mother, Elaine Thomas, has very recently passed away. So if we can just take, take a quick moment and, and recognize that, that would be great. All right, moving along. So sorry, my condolences. 
Uh, we have many sponsors for this event. In fact, we kind of had a joke going on at the chamber that uh, I think we're going to have to go to highest bidder because we actually have 10 sponsors in total that wanted to be recognized. We are going to do a major recognition of our two sponsors, uh, but I want to, uh, at this point, also recognize the other sponsors. Um, so the main sponsors today are Penn State Beaver and Strasburger, McKenna, Gutnick, and Gefsky. But the other sp sponsors, I'm going to handle them in, in reverse alphabetical order because I think West Banco gets the shaft every time with being a W. All right. So the folks from West Banco, Matt Dawson and the gang, can you give us a wave? Thank you. <laughs> Competing in the banking field is S and T Bank and Care Teams and the gang. Where are you? Thank you. Uh, Peoples, uh, with Ed Palumbo and the gang, whereabouts are you all? Are you still hiding and being shy? Yep, looks like it. All right, Lennon Smith, Solar Ray Engineering. Uh, Marie Hartman and the gang, give us a wave. Thank you. Express Employment Professionals, Deb Gray. Where are you, Deb? Are you being shy too? Thank you. <laughs> Uh, the Community College of Beaver County, Dr. Roger Davis. Whereabouts are you? Uh, the Beaver Valley Mall, Tim Muscari. Talk about a, a business in transition. They are fascinating to watch, and they are doing their darnest to make sure that uh, the mall continues to be relevant in our area, and I'm, I'm, I'm very much uh, in awe. And last but not least, the letter B, Beaver County Association of Realtors, Beverly P. Trendrio. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd get all through all the names, but obviously not. All right, so let me introduce first Penn State Beaver as one of our lead co-sponsors. So Penn State University Beaver Campus offers a superb educational and cultural opportunities uh, of the large Penn State University, but now instead in a friendly and supportive environment, whether you're on campus or through the web portal. Uh, its chancellor, since the summer of 2016, Dr. Jennifer Cushman is a chamber board member, we're very grateful, and a major force and leader of our Economic Development Committee. The chamber is particularly delighted to be associated through the Invent Penn State Initiative to establish this is exciting, an innovation hub in Beaver County that would serve as a way to connect students with local industries and businesses. Stay tuned as we will soon be announcing more on co-working spaces, a business accelerator, an eventual maker space, a community kitchen, an after school arts program that will coordinate uh, with local Beaver Falls other businesses uh, such as Renee Sewer Stray Cat. Uh, and uh, job training. But if you can't wait until then, please contact us or contact the folks at Penn State University to help us make this dream come to, uh, through, uh, to fruition. Uh, we need your support both financially but also in spirit to make sure that we make this a reality for Beaver County. And so I turn to Jen Cushman now, many facets to Jen, uh, but I'll leave you uh, with one that she is a professor of German and uh, she has made expanding international opportunities as a priority for her students and she's traveled far and, and often. Uh, please help me in welcoming and thanking Jen and Penn State University as a lead co-sponsor of today's State of the County breakfast meeting. Jen? Delighted to be here today at the State of the County Breakfast um, and to be representing Penn State Beaver here. We are honored and proud to co-sponsor this event. Um, our campus enacts Penn State's land-grant mission through providing students in our region access to the exceptional education and extensive alumni network Penn State provides. I've met at least three alums today, so that's great. Our Penn, we are. Let's do it again. We are. Our average incoming GPA is 3.2, 
They also engage in serving the county and the region through service learning, internships, and volunteers' efforts. And we have two Penn State Beaver students here with us today. Shane and Josh, wave. Yeah. And they're involved with our Student Government Association, so it's, it's particularly interesting for them to see government in action here. So. Uh, we also enact our land grant mission through engaging in our local community at an institutional level. We work with other leaders across the county to provide Penn State resor resources to such efforts as the Beaver Valley Innovation Hub. This is, will be a catalyst for community and economic entrepreneurship and revitalization in its first phase. It will contain a large common room for co-working and community events, a staffed reception, a wired conference room, and a digital makerspace, as well as private offices and an exercise studio. This is a Beaver County effort, not a Penn State effort. This is a Beaver County effort supported in its startup by the Invent Penn State Initiative, which works with local communities to cultivate entrepreneurial leadership. Many regional leaders are planning this, including the Chamber, the Corporation for Economic Development, and the Bridges and Pathways College Consortium, which includes Penn State Beaver, Community College of Beaver County, Geneva College, and Robert Morris University. And I'm honored to work with my fellow higher education leaders, especially President Roger Davis of CCBC, who I think is here today, and Calvin Trapp of Geneva on a number of initiatives, including, of course, the Hub, but also the development of career pathways, career educational pathways, joint student efforts like our career fair, and a common reading with an associated events series. This year, uh, we are partnering with PA Cyber, and Brian's here too, right? Yep. So, um, with uh, the reading is Peter Block's Community, uh, which is timely in its emphasis on sustainable community building. Next academic year, we're going to be reading Sarah Elaine Smith's Mary Lou is Everywhere, and I'm really happy we're gonna be collaborating with the Beaver County Libraries. Is Jody here too? Wait, oh, there he is, good. I knew, I saw you earlier. Um, on the Beaver County Reads. So Smith is a regional author, originally from Greene County in our southwesternmost corner of Pennsylvania. And here's a description of her novel, Mary Lou is Everywhere. It's one of NPR's favorite books of 2019. Consumed by the longing for a different life, a teenager flees her family and carefully slips into another, replacing a girl whose own sudden disappearance still haunts the town. 14-year-old Cindy and her two older brothers live in rural Pennsylvania in a house with occasional electricity, two fierce dogs, one book, and a mother who comes and goes for months at a time. Deprived of adult supervision, the siblings rely on one another for nourishment of all kinds. As Cindy's brothers take on new responsibilities for her care, the shadow of danger looms larger and the status quo no longer seems tolerable. So the themes explored in this gripping story are recognizable to most residents of southwestern Pennsylvania, including our own Beaver County. And as we continue to meet challenges such as those Smith raises and embrace our future through efforts like the Hub, we are grateful to our elected officials for the work they do to improve life for all of residents of Beaver County. And I'm sure we all look forward to today's remarks. Thank you. So in this room, we're full of uh, great folks who support uh, various efforts. For those who work with Jen Cushman on the Economic Development uh, Team and Innovation Hub, would you just briefly stand for me? I want you to get a feel for how many folks are engaged in this. Please stand if you're involved with us on the Economic Development side. Ah, oh, wonderful. And thank you. Appreciate it. Next, we turn to the other lead co-sponsors, Strans Strasburger, McKenna, Gutnick, and Gevsky. Uh, dedicated to excellence in law since 1919. 100 years, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> the attorneys at SMGG have protected the interests of business and private individuals. Relationships built on mutual trust and respect are the backbone of their success. They offer a full service range of services and are fearless in the pursuit of justice for their clients. Harry Councilman, a shareholder at SMGG with focus on civil and commercial litigation, has a broad and fascinating range of clients, including the owners of the salvage rights to the wreck of the Titanic. Oh. Harry, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate to say this, but he, his other client is the Chamber of Commerce. We're hoping not to go down. <laughs> 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 uh, or not, 
nautical theme continues. All right. <laughs> Anyways, I'm saying don't mess with us because you're going to have to deal with Harry. <laughs> Harry's also the, uh, the author of a Pennsylvania commercial litigation book, now in its fifth edition, and is serving as a, which serves as a primer on minimizing risk for transactional attorneys and business owners. But really, many, many of you know Harry for his tireless advocacy and work on the Chamber's Government Affairs Committee. And I want to uh, personally take this opportunity to thank Harry for all of that commitment of time, energy, I don't know how he finds the time, uh, yes, I get emails at 2 in the morning from Harry, so I know how he's finding time, but Harry, I can't thank you uh, enough for all that you do. And uh, also, before I call Harry up here, many folks at the chamber have stepped forward, uh, the members, in terms of being a part of that effort as well. So if you are a member of any one of our government affairs committees, please stand and be acknowledged. Come on up. Don't be shy. so important about a chamber it's not about uh, that you sent in your dues payment and you attend the events it's really rolling up your sleeves and making a difference for the county so I can't thank you enough for this but here we are Harry please uh, come on up and, and thank you again for for sponsoring this uh, this event and the state of the county breakfast Harry. thank you Helen and good morning everybody um, I am uh, proud to be here this morning wearing two hats, uh, first in my capacity with SMGG and also as the chair of the Chamber's Government Affairs Committee. Uh, so I'll begin with my quick SMGG pitch. Um, we, we are very proud to, to co-sponsor this event again this year alongside Penn State Beaver. Uh, for those of you who don't know about us, we are a full service law firm with offices in Beaver, Pittsburgh, and Greensburg. Uh, pertinent to this chamber audience, uh, we offer a wide range of services that can support your business or organization, uh, ranging from entity formation and business structuring, real estate transactions, creditors' rights, uh, employment law, including wage and hour issues, discrimination issues, or other HR issues, non-compete agreements, confidentiality agreements, uh, we help folks on tax issues, including income tax, sales and use tax, and estate, estate tax issues, intellectual property protection, enforcing and defending non-compete and trade secret claims, estate and succession planning if you want to help leave your business to the next generation, municipal issues, uh, including local compliance and zoning matters, uh, school law, including the K through 12 level, as well as higher education institutions. Of course, litigation and dispute resolution services, and a host of supplemental personal services that many business owners and families turn to us for from time to time. So if you have questions about our services, please visit Kelly Lariba back at our table, or uh, any of my colleagues who are sit sitting at the front center table here, and we'd be happy to answer your questions, or visit us at smgglaw.com. Switching now to my government affairs hat, um, one of my responsibilities is to uh, acknowledge uh, other elected officials besides our panelists today. One of the things we do at the Government Affairs Committee is promote and encourage dialogue between chamber members and elected officials. Uh, so I will be announcing those in attendance today. If you're an elected official, we, we don't have appointed officials uh, on this list, but if you're an elected official and I call your name, please stand and raise your hand so that we can uh, know who you are in case somebody wants to make a connection. Uh, we have Alexander Andres, who's a council member in the borough of Beaver, Alex. Um, Dave Gaybauer, our coroner, I didn't see Dave. Uh, uh, our district attorney, David Lozier. Debbie Pfeiffer, Rochester Township Commissioner. Thank you, Debbie. Donald Wachter, Big Beaver Borough Mayor. Thank you, Don. Gina Teams, also a Rochester Township Commissioner. 
uh, Jason Landsbach, uh, Council President at Big Beaver Borough. Judy Ensled, Clerk of Courts in Beaver County. Maria Longo, Beaver County Controller. Michael Rossi, Beaver County Prothonotary. Nicholas DiPietro, Hopewell Township Commissioner. Rebecca Matsko, Potter Township Chairperson of the Board of Supervisors. Richard Buffalini, Hopewell Township Board of Commissioners, President. Ronald Alberti, Recorder of Deeds of Beaver County. Sandy Egley, Beaver County Treasurer and former Beaver County Commissioner. Sherry Zabela, Ohioville Borough Councilwoman. Tim Forrest, Hopewell Township Commissioner. Sheriff Tony Guy, Sheriff of Beaver County. Tracy Antoline Patton, Beaver County Register of Wills. And Mark Piccarilli, Brighton Township Board of Supervisors. Mark, let's have a hand for all of our elected officials. Jack was thinking I may have missed Judy Enslin, Clerk of Courts. Judy, okay, I thought I, okay. Didn't want to omit anybody. Um, and if I did, I apologize. Um, so the Government Affairs Committee is one of the standing committees of the chambers. Uh, in your program are the policy, policy priorities that the committee adopts every year. Uh, we would ask you to take a look at those. And it, you will see that our policy priorities for the chamber focus on three areas, education, riverfronts, and transportation. I'd like to acknowledge the chairs of each of those committees. The education subcommittee chair is Lindsay Corteau. Our rivers subcommittee chair is Rebecca Matsko. And the transportation subcommittee chair is Bob Terwilliger. The subcommittees really do all the hard work on government affairs and we thank them for all that they do. I'd also like to acknowledge our Vice Chair, Scott Monnet, who's here today. And uh, the Government Affairs Committee is really a, a great cross-section of chamber members. And we monitor policy and legislative matters and advocate for issues that are important to the chamber and chamber members. We work cooperatively with government officials at all levels, local, state, and federal. And if you're interested and you're a chamber member, if you're interested in serving on the committee, please see uh, myself, Scott Monnet, Helen, or any of the chamber staff. We meet on the second Friday of every month at eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, one other housekeeping matter, on your tables, you will see uh, some cards. Um, if you have questions for our panelists during the program, please write your question down. We invite questions from the audience hold the question in the air and one of our chamber staff will come around and pick up your card and bring it to the front table and we'll make sure it gets into John's hands for uh, the questions to our panelists. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank Helen Kissick, uh, our chamber staff, Michelle Musselman and Caitlin Paletti uh, for all their work putting this event together. I'd like to thank the Fez, uh, for hosting this event, the Thomas family and Steve Cavelli and his team. And now for our program. Uh, I'm very pleased again to introduce our moderator this morning. Uh, many of you know uh, John Delano. He probably doesn't need an introduction, but I do want to take a moment and uh, say a few things uh, about John, who's been helping us for a number of years now with this event. John is the Money and Politics Editor for KDKA-TV, a columnist for the Pittsburgh Business Times, and an adjunct professor of public policy and politics at Carnegie Mellon University's Heinz College. Um, John's bio is very long, but I just want to point out some highlights that I think uh, reflect on John's significance as a local journal journalist. 
Uh, in 2019, John became the first and only local TV reporter to interview President Trump one-on-one, -on -one, following several invitations to join the White House press corps during the president's visits to Pittsburgh. In 2018, John had a one-on-one -on -one interview in Pittsburgh with Vice President Pence, Kellyanne Conway, counselor to the president, and Donald Trump Jr. He has also interviewed several members of the president's cabinet in 2018. In 2017, John was one of half a dozen TV journalists invited to the White House to interview seven members of President Trump's cabinet. Following the Democratic Convention in Philadelphia, John has had an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with both Secretary Hillary Clinton and United States Senator Tim Kaine. In March of 2011, John became the first Pennsylvania television reporter to interview President Obama in the White House, and he was invited back in March 2012 for a second interview. His last White House interview in the Obama administration was in May of 2016 with Vice President Joe Biden. A trial lawyer by training, John has worked behind the scenes uh, as Chief of Staff to former Congressman Doug Walgren, and he cut his teeth serving as a congressional staffer in the mid-1980s. So John knows a lot about government at all levels. Uh, he moderates and facilitates seminars, debates, and programs, and speaks on a number of governmental and political issues to many civic business and labor groups. His reputation is as an even-handed, nonpartisan political analyst, and he has led this has led to his selection as a moderator and panelist for many debates and events such as this. Please help me welcome John Dellen. Thank you, Harry, so much. And good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, you can do better than that. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. I think, is this mic on? I'm going to wander a little bit. Well, you know why I'm here, don't you? I came to Beaver County to find out the results in Iowa. <laughs> I mean, why not? You probably know as well as anybody in Iowa who won that, that the crazy caucus. I think it's just a perfect example of why caucuses make no sense. They really don't. I mean, the fact is that a primary election like we have in Pennsylvania and New Hampshire, and certainly is, is the way where you get to vote simply by going in and casting a ballot and going home. You do it privately in a secret ballot. There's nothing private about the way Iowa does it. And of course, it's, uh, it's very embarrassing uh, for the state of Iowa, for the Democratic Party. Although to be truly nonpartisan, I will remind everybody in 2012, in the Republican Iowa caucuses, at 1.30 a.m., the Republican chairman of Iowa declared Mitt Romney the winner of the Iowa caucuses, two days later, he had to retract that and say, Pennsylvania's Rick Santorum actually won the Iowa caucuses. So it doesn't matter which party, they just screw it up no matter who. <laughs> well, one group that never screws up is this Beaver County Chamber of Commerce. This is an awesome organization. And with all due respect to Jack, it's never been better. <laughs> and why is that true? Because you have three women running the show. Right? Did you get that? You know, with, with uh, Helen and Michelle and uh, Caitlin, it sort of reminds me, my mother was a, I love having so many local officials here, because my mother, was a local official, was a township commissioner in Mount Lebanon. And both my father and the rest of the family learned firsthand how tough a job that is. This was back in the 1980s. But she always said, Mount Lebanon has five commissioners. And my mother always said, it wasn't until Mount Lebanon elected three of the five women that Mount Lebanon really had good government. <laughs> and I'm sure that's true with the chamber. So, Congratulations to the Chamber of Commerce. Of course, the real reason I come to this event is I love the eggs at the fest. <laughs> they are terrific. They are terrific. 
So uh, I'm back again. I don't know how many years I've been doing this. I thank the chamber for re-inviting me every year, and uh, we're going to move quickly ahead to the program. It's uh, always a great honor to be with the elected officials of Beaver County and your county commissioners. Um, I was basically told, don't introduce them. We, they don't need any introductions. I mean, uh, I guess Dan didn't have, you don't have a written bio. I couldn't find anything on the county website. Jack has a, li a, a little one, although he's got a lot to say. <laughs> he's a friend. <laughs> uh, but the truth is that these two county commissioners, and, and by the way, Tony Amadeo, the third county commissioner, is not here because he is representing Beaver County in a federal lawsuit. And so he has to be in federal court as part of the representation team. Although I will point out the great honor to Beaver County in that he was just elected, I believe, uh, vice chair of the Southwestern Pennsylvania uh, Conference, which is, we'll talk a little bit more about that commission a little bit later. But Tony is not here as a result of that. But we are very fortunate to have our two majority commissioners here to tell us a little bit about the state of Beaver County. I have a bunch of questions I'm going to throw at them, and some of which they may know, some of which they may not know. And uh, of course, we're counting on you to fill out cards. So if you have those questions, as Harry mentioned, feel free to write a question down, and we'll try to get them in here in the next number of minutes. I'm going to ask each of these two commissioners to come up first and speak from this mic, and then we'll just let them sit and we'll pass mics back, back and forth. Um, but uh, Dan Camp uh, is uh, the chairman of the Beaver County Commission. He was just re-elected to his second term, and uh, it's terrific to have him here once again. I want to ask each of these commissioners, just take a couple minutes to uh, tell us just generally your view of the state of Beaver County, and then we'll get into some specifics. So with that, please join me in welcoming Commissioner Dan Camp. Good morning, everyone. Um, I think you'll learn today that uh, I don't necessarily need a bio because the work that gets done isn't just from the commissioner's office, it's from our whole courthouse. So it's truly humbling uh, to be here today to address the size of this crowd when we're discussing the state of the county. Of course, I want to begin by saying thank you to a few people. Helen and, and the whole Government Affairs Committee, thank you for uh, being instrumental in making this uh, event happen. John Thomas, I know he can't be here. Steve, thank you again for always being able to accommodate us and also being able to provide a great venue for our fellow Beaver County residents here. The main goal I set four years ago when I ran for county commissioner was to leave Beaver County better than I found it. So I'm going to give you a quote. George Shin once said, there's no such thing as a self-made man. You will only reach your goals only with the help of others. And with that in mind, I'd like to introduce some of the others who are here in person, who are helping achieve my goals on a daily basis, and are in attendance today. And that I have the honor and privilege to work beside daily, and are truly the ones who are continuing to move Beaver County forward. It's important that the Board of Commissioners has a great relationship with the court systems. Beaver County is fortunate to work with our courts daily, and continue to foster a good relationship between President Judge Mancini and the Board of Commissioners. Today we have Bill Hare, Bill Hare here, Beaver County Court Administrator, and I thank him for welcoming commitment and fostering that good relationship with the Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Daniel. We all know how important it is with the business community being here today. It is important to have a great human resources department. I'd like to acknowledge Sydney Shaw, our Human Resources Director, and Kaylee Applegarth, our HR Generalist. Imagine running a business or a government with roughly 700 full-time employees, 190 part-time employees, nine different collective bargaining agreements, and 14 different buildings. But well, we do that, and we do it well. I'd like to welcome Leslie Hallis. Leslie is our Director of Children Youth Services. As we say year in and year out, one of the most important jobs as a county commissioner is to make, make sure our children are safe. And I'm proud to say that our Children Youth Services is setting the standards high across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. With the leadership of Leslie, her staff, the Honorable Judges Mitchell Shaheen and Judge Deborah DeCastro, we were one in six counties selected by the state to be part of the Family Engagement Initiative Program. Their program is already starting to see results, and we are starting to see less children just in 2019 being placed in foster care. Another great asset we have in our Human Services building is Gerard Mike. Gerard is our Director of Ca our Beaver County Behavior Health. 
Director Mike is the president of his statewide association and is leading the charge in Harrisburg with his 66 counterparts to make sure that everyone in Beaver County and across the Commonwealth who needs help is continuing to get help. Our director of elections probably had one of the most difficult budget scenarios in preparing for her 2020 budget. Doreen Manditti, who is here with us today, had to increase her budget by roughly $1.5 million because of another unfunded state mandate where the county was forced to purchase new voting machines. Doreen spearheaded that process for the Board of Commissioners and by agreeing to use paper ballots in the 2019 election and for future elections, she saved the county roughly $2 million. Lisa Signor, Director of Community De Development, Lance Grable, Director of Planning and Redevelopment, and Jody Oliver, the Director of Library Commission, all have something in common. The work they do affects almost every municipality in Beaver County somewhere or another. Whether Lisa is working on CDBG grants or assisting to end the homeless shelter issues, Lance and Jody are continuously working on gathering grants to fund our library systems and getting the next brownfield ready for development, and I'd like to thank them for their hard work. <laughs> Holly Voigt, our waste management director, is probably one of Beaver County's best kept secrets. When Holly became director in 2015, Beaver County was out of compliance with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and couldn't apply for any grants. Well, today I'm proud to say that when she put our program back into compliance, she received more than $2 million in grants since 2015 just for our waste management department. Lastly, the person no one in this room probably wants to meet, Warden Bill Shoup. <laughs> Warden Shoup has been our warden since 1996 when the jail was located in Beaver Borough, across from the courthouse. Warden played a pivotal role in moving the jail to West Alcoa and modernizing it. Most recently, Warden Shoup implemented with the help of Kate Lowry and Gerard Mike and District Attorney David Lozier our Vivitrol program. Our, Viv our Vivitrol program is just another way we continue to make sure our inmates are being treated so that when they enter back into society, they may be better than when they left it. I realize my goals, our goals as a Board of Commissioners can only be reached with the help of others, our department heads. And it's an exciting time in Beaver County and I know everyone in this room has read the many ups and downs from the courthouse. The things I just mentioned are just a few things that take place every day in our county facilities. And I want it to be clear today, when you leave this room, you can be proud of the work that these others are getting done, along with the ones who couldn't be here today. I was told every day is a new adventure, and I look forward to that new adventure when I enter the halls of the courthouse. I look forward to continuing to serve as your county commissioner, and I look forward to continuing to learn, because whenever you stop learning, you stop progressing. And I know with the knowledge that Commissioner Amadeo and Commissioner Manning have, I will never have any trouble with stop learning. So thank you again for this opportunity, and I look forward to answering any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. And I think it's uh, very right and proper to acknowledge all the folks who work for Beaver County because this is a team effort. It's always a team effort in just about every organization, and certainly in county government, as in local government. You do rely on a lot of good staff people. They don't get the attention they deserve, and in many ways, uh, they are the unsung heroes of success in government. So that was well, well put. Thank you for doing that. Uh, let me introduce, again with no introduction, elected for his first term as county commissioner, the past president of the Beaver County Chamber of Commerce, my friend Jack Manning. Jack. Uh, thanks, John. I, I knew Sunday was Groundhog Day, but uh, when I woke up this morning, I felt a lot like Bill Murray walking into this room. It seems very familiar. I've been here before, I think. But um, thank you all again for attending. Uh, some of my favorite people in the world, uh, the Chamber of Staff uh, and folks, and all of you that I've gotten to know so well, the nonprofit organizations, the small business owners, the industry. Uh, everybody, um, it, it, it's a vital part of who I am, how I've become, and, and I greatly appreciate seeing y'all here this morning. I, I'd like to just start, uh, I have several perspectives on the state of the county. Uh, it will be 30 days, I think, Thursday that I've actually been in office, so if anything is going well, I will accept the credit. <laughs> if you have a problem, Dan, no, not Dan, Tony. <laughs> Uh, but, but I have to tell you, I, I am excited about the state of our governance and the good governance that I've been able to see and witness in, in my first almost 30 days. Uh, there are some great, hardworking, dedicated uh, 
folks in, in the courthouse and in the different departments. Uh, and, and I've been thoroughly impressed. But, but I'll start with the most impressed uh, I, I've been is really with uh, Chairman Camp. Um, Dan's grasp of the operations of the courthouse and the functions and the department heads uh, and our budget and understanding that has just been phenomenal. Uh, I got to tell you, he's, he's impressed the heck out of me and, and I am confident in where we're going uh, in terms of providing good governance over the next four years uh, in Beaver County. It, it's compounded not only by his talent and his dedication. I mean, here's a guy told me he was up at 12 at night reading the county code. I'm like, who reads the county code <laughs> at midnight? But that Dan, Dan has really done a great job. But you compound that with the row officers that were brought in and, and my knowledge and familiarity with them and my comfort with them. There's a single person that came into office that is dedicated to doing what's right for the county. There are no political agendas. There's no um, hidden agendas uh, with that group. And, it, and it's been a good blend of people with experience like the Judy Enslins and the, and the uh, Tracy Pattons and Tony Guy and the guys, the Dave Lozier that have been there before and Dan uh, and Tony, of course, uh, combined with some people that are coming in with a new perspective, like myself, like Maria Longo, like Sandy Egley into a new, new position, um, and Mike Rossi coming into the pathology. Um, I, I can tell you the collaboration, the bipartisan spirit uh, that I've seen has been phenomenal, and I see no reason why that's not going to continue uh, for the next four years. Certainly from my standpoint, I think you all know uh, I'm in the collaboration and public-private partnerships and all of those things. So from a good governance standpoint, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited and, and pleased with what I've seen. I will talk just briefly uh, with, with some data, because I tend to be kind of a data guy um, at times, but the state of the economy, I think, is pretty solid in, in Beaver County. Um, but there are some troublesome areas, uh, and there's some watch outs that we have to look at. Um, certainly, post cracker plant construction, uh, will some of the things that we've seen that have been going very good, very strong right now, uh, work, uh, continue to work in our favor or not? Um, steal a, a, a phrase from my friend Lou Villati, uh, you know, the cracker plant was a meteor strike, and it certainly had profound impact on this. But those things don't come along very often. What happens post? Cracker plant. How do we diversify and continue the strength of our economy? Um, I was looking at some numbers, uh, and our friends from the board of uh, realtors are here. But 2018, 2019, um, almost 20,000 homes sold. There were 50 more this year than last year. Uh, the, the, the median sales price um, is up $8,200 from last year of those uh, 1,968 homes. That's a good sign, positive sign to me about the economy. Days on the market has been about the same. Median household income's up. Um, median family income is, is up. So, and certainly in my conversations with all of you, some of your businesses uh, are about as strong and as good as they've been in quite some time. Certainly the influx of all the construction workers uh, and everybody else is uh, impacting that. I'm particularly pleased with the impact and the revitalization and the hope that is given to many of our legacy riverfront towns. Um, we're seeing great progress in many of those, and if I start naming names, somebody will be upset for leaving out their town. But the, the challenges uh, that, that we have ahead, um, only 73% uh, of our, 78% of our households have broadband internet connection. That's, a, that's an issue. If we're gonna continue to grow and prosper as a county and as an economy, we, uh, we need to have more access there. Um, our poverty rate is still 11.2% in Beaver County uh, compared to our 10 county uh, metropolitan uh, region. Uh, we're not as high as Pittsburgh, which is 20%, uh, but we're not where uh, I'd like us to be. And then if you factor in, uh, I don't know if Mike Rubino is here or not, I don't think he is, but uh, the Alice numbers, is there? Mike. So the Alice numbers, you know about that, those are the folks that are like one paycheck away from being in poverty, is 24% in county. So you combine those together and almost a third of our population is either at risk or in poverty. 
uh, that's not good. So as good as the economy's been, it's been unequal. And uh, we need to work on that. Uh, and it's particularly exacerbated at the K-12 level in education. Uh, you look at our 14 um, public school systems, and anywhere between roughly 25% to 75% of the students from school to school are at risk and in poverty. Uh, and that's not acceptable. Um, our median age is still too high. Last numbers I saw, 45.1. We've got to start attracting and retaining uh, more young folks into Beaver County. 76% uh, of our households in Pennsylvania uh, do not have uh, students in uh, K-12 schools. I mean, think about that. Almost 75% of our households have no children in schools. Um, that's an issue. <laughs> um, and uh, the issue of uh, over, overdose deaths. Uh, 2016, as you know, we had a, a tough year, um, 104, 102. I know Dave Lozier's here. I'm not sure if uh, Dave Gabe Bauer showed up. Dave does a great job of overseeing all of that stuff as our, our corner. Uh, we, we knocked that down. Uh, to 41 last year. This year we'll probably be back over 50 over those deaths. That's unacceptable. Um, but when we really think about what Beaver County needs, uh, it, it's really population. As much as we need to diversify the economy, attract and retain more folks, um, you look at the numbers and we just presented some of these to some school board people. In the 20 year period from 20, uh, 1970 to 1990, not sharing this with anybody who's been here a long time doesn't know. 21,800 adults, 23,000 school children gone in that 20 year period. As uh, my friend Dr. Davis says, we've had the longest funeral for the demise of the steel industry in history. But if you look at the next 20 years after that, from 1990 to 2010, we lost another 13,500 people and 5,500 school children. So, we slowed it, um, but we're still losing too many people in, in this region. 2010 to 2030, we're projected to lose another 6,200 folks, 2,000 school, uh, um, school age children. So we have our work cut, cut out, and if you've been paying attention at all to what I've been saying, and I don't assume you're any better than my wife at that. Um, <laughs> You know, our, our vision really is to grow Beaver County. Um, we, we need to differentiate ourselves. Uh, we, we need to become known as a place where you can come raise a family, educate your children, find a rewarding career, um, retire with dignity, and enjoy the natural beauty of the rivers, the parks, and the farmland that we have here that, that we, we love so much. So, how are we going to do that? A lot more collaboration, leverage our resources, ensure we have a common marketing strategy, uh, get everybody at the table. And uh, I'm pleased to announce that uh, uh, working with uh, Chairman Camp uh, and Commissioner Amadeo, we're going to be rolling out um, uh, what we're calling the Beaver County um, Commissioner's Economic and Community Growth Commission. Um, for those of you that are familiar with the 2010 COP plan, there's a little executive summary there. Go to the county's website and you'll, you'll see what it looks like. We've tweaked it to add some, some numbers, but uh, starting March, hopefully, uh, we will have all of the folks that need to be at the table talking with one voice, marketing Beaver County with one brand, and trying to make uh, Beaver County uh, the best it could be by, by growing it. So, There'll be more details to, to come on that, but uh, that's where we are. Uh, I'm excited about the future and uh, appreciate the opportunity to answer any questions you guys have down the road. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna give you this one. All right, beautiful. Yeah, we'll have each of our commissioners. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Manning. Appreciate that. And, and appreciate the fact that, that uh, both our commissioners are up front about where Beaver County is. 
I want to ask a couple of quick questions and then we'll move on. We're already getting some questions on the card, so feel free to write down anything that you might care about. Um, let me just ask you this question, if I may, gentlemen. In one word, describe the state of Beaver County today. One word. What comes to mind? <laughs> the chairman is deferring to his uh, colleague. Yeah. Um, I, you, you think I would know this question was coming? Yes. The first question before. I've asked it before. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, one, one word. Uh, hopeful. Hopeful. Uh, yeah. I'll let you uh, talk about that in a second. Okay. Dan, yeah. earlier. Describe the state of Beaver County today in one word. I'm going to have to use, uh, I don't know if this would be the appropriate word, but I'm going to use the word drastic because of the change that we've seen in four years. Drastic. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, well, let me ask each of you to take 30 seconds and amplify. Go ahead, so, so I'm going to. Well, four years ago, when we were, I think we were in the other room, we discussed you know, the county finances and where the county was. I think you're going to learn today that we're going to eventually be able to start improving Beaver County's facilities, improving our parks, because we're getting to the place where we need to be financially, uh, financially stable. Uh, you know, they say we should have about two months worth of funds in a reserve fund to uh, be able to accommodate. We're almost there. Uh, when the books close, hopefully in the next month, Maria, right, next month? Okay. <laughs> We're going to see about $9.6 million in our reserve fund. You know, we added $2 million in 2019. In 2018, we added $4.7 million to that reserve fund. So we're starting to be where we should be and, and where we're going to be able to start to improve our facilities and improve right. our county parks. And, and that quality of life that Jack talks about, and Jack has talked about for the last four years and probably the last eight years, but to be able to retain these families, we have to be able to have the means to do so. And I think we're going to be able to start doing that. Right. Good. Good news. Hopeful, Jack. Just in 30 seconds. Yeah. Why I, that work? I think just the buzz that's, that, that's happening across the county and everywhere I go. You look at what's happening in Beaver Falls with some of the great development and work for There's a lot of uh, um, our towns, Ambridge, Aliquippa, um, and Agra, Rochester, all of those towns. But then I also look at what's happening in Chippewa, where I live, in Hopewell Township, in Brighton, uh, and the likes. Uh, you look at um, uh, somebody like St. Barnabas coming in and the big impact they've had in Brighton Township. Well, St. Barnabas doesn't come in and invest with it, invest it into a community if they weren't hopeful about the future right. and saw uh, a lot of good things on, on the horizon. So, I mean, hopeful is, is really, I mean, we were in a pretty deep hole for a long time. And uh, we're out of it, and, and now we're starting to, uh, to build uh, on the foundation. And I'm hopeful, I can tell you that. Good. Well, now both of you mentioned uh, sort of new initiatives as a result of the change and the hopefulness. Is there, what is the, uh, Jack, you may go back to what you mentioned earlier when you were up at the podium, but what is the number one initiative you see going forward in 2020 for Beaver County? Dan? <laughs> I will defer this one to Jack because, as Jack said, the the commission that the board is going to be putting together was part of the 2010 comprehensive comprehensive plan that was voted on by previous boards, but it was never um, it was never executed. And and over the last four years, we really focused on I really focused on other items, but now that you know with Jack's vision and Jack's economic development, you know it, it, he's a good mix to the board because he's going to spearhead this for the board with us you know being supportive of being there but you know so I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Jack answer right. that because that, that's really the, ec the economic <coughs> development is going to take place in the next four years is going to be something that you know Jack will oversee and, and report to the board. Well Jack what's this going to deliver for Beaver County? Well I, I think for the first time in a long time uh, again because of the excellent uh, department heads that we have the excellent row officers uh, the bipartisan collaboration that we have, and the interest in the business community, the nonprofit community, um, to all be on the same page. I mean, more than anything else, it, it, it's a collaborative effort that is going to drive the county with a unified voice going forward. One of the biggest criticisms uh, that I've heard from talking to uh, my new counterparts now in, in other counties it is that uh, the insinuation is that we've been behind the curve when it comes to speaking with one voice and collaborating across 
all segments uh, of our economy um, when it comes to trying to attract um, new business, but also, uh, as I said before, many times, we just don't want the jobs, we want the families behind those jobs in Beaver County. So how do we do that? We have to speak with you and like voice. And there's not one specific initiative, John. I'm, I've never been a single issue person to, be, to begin with. Um, there's, there's a multitude of things that we need to do in sync that work um, in synergy to, to make this happen. Right. Well, let me just sort of follow up on that, and this is one of the questions, and we're getting these, so thank you very much, folks. Um, with Commissioner Amadeo just being named the vice chair at the Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission, which, uh, folks may know, represents, I think, 10 counties in southwestern Pennsylvania. How does this, you know, how might Beaver County leverage SDC funding as a result of this? Are there any special advantages having Tony in that position that might help in terms of transportation funding or other kinds of things that the SDC is involved in? It, it's good to know somebody at talk. So, you know, when we have a specific project, I think we're going to be able to be able to move forward faster. And I'd like to acknowledge, uh, I still call him Chief Mick Jones and Kelly Gray who are here. They, they sit on our board as well. There's five members from Beaver County, three commissioners right. and two community at large. There are members. So it's a very large board. So just by having Commissioner Medeo as the vice chair doesn't mean Beaver County's gonna be able to get a special project done. Uh, you know, we have a lot of knowledge with Lou Velotti, who's our new uh, president of Community Economic Development. He was with C or he was with SPC for a long time. So I think it's important that you know, we do have a game plan moving forward, and I think this commission is really gonna put that to the forefront, so we can have these projects placed on their lap, so hopefully when we do the next plan with SPC, we can have some big projects on there. Jack, did you wanna add to that at all? Well, just, just to add real quickly, um, obviously they have the processes and formula for how things work through and, and, and get done at the SPC, but I will tell you, there's an acknowledgement by the folks at the SBC, Rich Fitzgerald, by the way, is the president right. of, of that Tony's advice. Even, even Rich from Allegheny County recognizes the importance and the impact that Beaver County has having and will have on the entire region. So we're, we're getting about as much attention as we've ever gotten, uh, at least in the 20 years I've lived here, uh, an acknowledgement of, of uh, Beaver County's impact. You know, I think you both may have referenced the, uh, the shelf cracker plant in one way or another. Let me ask you, we're getting a number of questions uh, with respect to that. Uh, for example, uh, one question, and, and I think we've had this question before, but let me ask it again, which is, can you speak to how the influx of Shell employees has impacted affordable housing? What efforts are in plan to manage rising rents in the county? Yeah. So, we, we all know that uh, rental property is in short supply and strong demand <clears throat> as a result of uh, uh, the practical plant primarily. Um, there are new housing starts um, and um, some attempt to try and uh, add to the, to the capacity. Um, but you have to be cautious of that because it is temporary. Um, we know in a couple of years, a lot of those will become uh, open again. This exacerbated some of our uh, nonprofits, uh, folks like the Cornerstone, who are trying to find places for, uh, for folks uh, in need, um, and the Housing Authority as, as well. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's, it's a free market, and those owners can rent to who they want to, and they're taking advantage of, uh, of a strong demand right now, and prices are, are going up. Anything to add to that, Dan? Let me ask another question related to this. What economic impacts do you expect the Shell ethylene plant to have on the tri-state oil and gas industry, both short-term in the next couple of years and long-term? So I, I think we're already starting to see <clears throat> different communities where people are starting to lay out different pipelines throughout Beaver County. It doesn't mean they're going to be active, but they're starting to, pre to prepare for the future. So I think that's really one of the effects, you know, with, with the economic effect behind it, it, they're going to continue employing people in this area and bringing people to spend money at our local restaurants. I'm sure a lot of you go out to eat on the weekends, Friday, Saturday nights, it's hard to get into a restaurant in the tri-state area because it is so busy. Even during the week with the workers who are here, you know, 
when you have to wait 35, 40 minutes to eat on a Wednesday night, it, it's a good sign. Um, so I, I think that's going to be the big economic drive. You know, we're starting to see people prepare these sites and prepare where they might be putting the gas lines down for future projects. Are you worried that when construction of the plant is completed, that it might lead to an economic downturn at all? No, it's Jack's commission now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 really don't, I don't believe so. I, I think we will see uh, the insulary jobs that we, we've been talking about for years. Uh, I, I know there were studies done before the uh, Shell Petrochemical Plant announced they were coming to Beaver County on work at their other sites, what the economic um, downstream jobs were. So I think it's just a waiting game that we waited for years for them to announce in June of 2016. And I think once they get open and operated and see that they're a full plant, I think we'll start to see those insulary jobs and those companies coming, whether it's in Beaver County or the Tri-State area, which goes back to SBC and County Executive Fitzgerald's, knowing how important Beaver County is because they're going to reap the rewards as well. And I, are you going to save us? Uh, but no, but I would agree. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a little familiar with that industry, and I do know historically there's at least a three to three to five to one ratio of indirect and induced jobs that are created with 600 permanent jobs are there. They're going to have maintenance staff, and then you're going to have all of the things that supply that cracker plant <clears throat> on an ongoing basis once it's up and running. Um, there's a lot more than just the 600 jobs. I mean, it's one thing I get perturbed as just 600 jobs up. It's not just 600 jobs. Multiply that times at least four or five. Um, but that's just for that facility. Then you look at all of the other folks that we anticipate moving in, the grounds being prepared for it. Um, sites are, are being uh, looked at for, for expansion. Uh, I think we're going to be in good, I'm sure. So that's really where we are to date about the reassessment. Um, but we will, we will be having a very big PR marketing plan on what's going to be taking place, meeting with the Chiefs of Police Association, meeting with the Realtors Association, so that they can inform their, their residents and also inform their uh, agents on what's going to be taking place over the next two years. So. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Commissioner Manning, you already mentioned the issue of uh, population here in uh, Beaver County. Um, what plans, well, let me just ask you specifically, how important is this United States Census that we're going to be taking this year, this spring, to Beaver County, the future of Beaver County, and what, if anything, is the county doing to ensure that everyone is counted in this county? Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's very important. I'm very anxious because of all these numbers and projections we've had. I really want to see the actual census data and the results uh, to see exactly where the trend is and, and where we're going. We, we know some of that may be temporary. Hopefully, we'll, we'll have a population that looks like it's, it's stabilized. But uh, I, I can tell you that uh, Joe West from our planning department has had multiple meetings, has been heavily engaged in the census uh, process. Uh, we've been communicating and putting flyers out and letting people know about the importance of it. Obviously, uh, I don't know, Lance is here somewhere. What, what's the, I mean, there's, there's a dollar figure related to, to every person that we count. I forget the number that, that Joe told me, but it's extremely important financially uh, for government funding for things to be accurately counted. And we, we can't afford to, to miss a person right. anywhere in, in, in that process. But Dan, did you want to add anything? It, it's important also because this is going to, um, affect the realignment for the political, the state level, and the federal level. And, and as well, I support smaller government, but it is important that we have good representation at, in Harrisburg and Washington, D.C. And if we were to lose a seat somewhere, you know, that might be one less voice that we have there. So that's a, a really another important role of the census as well. Yeah, I have done stories on this, and I have to tell you, I mean, there is a huge undercount problem uh, throughout the region, throughout the country, frankly. Oh, and significantly, one of the biggest undercounts comes among children, where they're not always accounted for in the pr proper way. And of course, you know, when the census begins, and it's going to begin online in mid-March, is my understanding. April 1st is kind of the census a day. But they're going to encourage people, I think, to go online to register their folks there to I will say, right, John, I don't think there's any way Pennsylvania doesn't lose a congressional seat at the end of the census. Yeah. With, with uh, 
The aging population we have in Pennsylvania, one of the older states in the country, with growth in the South and the Florida, and so that seat has to go somewhere. And more than likely, it's not going to <laughs> stay in Pennsylvania. Yeah. So I expect this to go down at least one. Yeah, the question there will be whether that one loss of seat from 18 to 17 comes out of Philadelphia or comes out of Western Pennsylvania. That's, yeah, That's going to be the political debate for sure. Um, as the local sponsor of the CCBC, under the Pennsylvania Community College Act, what is and should be the county's financial commitment to the community college of Beaver County? Well, that, that's an unfair question for me because I was a trustee at a community college for eight years when the county took over uh, sponsorship. Um, I know what it should be, uh, and I know the reality of what it has been. Both the local sponsor and the state have not uh, ponied up their fair share. Originally, the act, as you know, was supposed to be one third, one third, one third, one third students, uh, the population through, uh, through tuition, one third county sponsor, and one third state. The state has, uh, I don't even know what it's at right now, Dr. Davis, but it's, it's uh, pretty poor. Uh, and I, I know we've done the best we can. Uh, I wasn't involved with the budget uh, specifically, but I was brought into the conversation between CCB. BC and, uh, and, and the county park. And for the most part, I think they've gotten the budget they asked for, but I haven't looked specifically along those, those lines. In other words, is Beaver County giving as much from a governmental standpoint as it could? I, I would say yes. Right? right now, you know, um, this is obviously an open debate that we will have for years to come, but I think it is important for everyone to know that this Board of Commissioners, past Board of Commissioners, fully support the community college because we see what it offers to our residents, not only in Beaver County, but across the United States. Uh, you know, we have some of the best programs and we have to make sure that we continue to strive and continue to make sure these programs continue to build. Um, but right now, I would say, yes, we are at the point where we're paying everything they need, everything we can. Uh, there are additional uh, requests, not throughout the year, but at the beginning of the year, maybe for a capital project that they would like to have help assist it on. And, and some of them, you know, do fall on our uh, like at our county airport. We we need a new air traffic control tower, as everyone knows in this room how important our air traffic control program is in the United States. You know, it's the best, if not one of the best. So you know, we'll, we'll see these requests come at the budget year, and, and there are times where we do make cuts to them. But you know, right now when we're preparing the 2020 budget, we we had to decide on. You know whether we're going to put a new 3.3 million dollar roof on the courthouse or build a uh, help uh, facilitate and build a new air traffic control tower. So you know, right now, I, I would say we are where, where we can be, but that doesn't mean at the end of next year, or in the middle of this year, financially we can revisit anything that they have requests for. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is, uh, every organization that we do support, everything that we don't, that have asked us, we'd love to be able to do more. For every time, because Dan said we're, we're just coming out of uh, the financial difficulty we had. It, it really goes back to the tax increase that was done four years ago that got us to the point where, where we're solvent and we don't have to raise taxes and we've got enough to finally start taking care of uh, our facilities, uh, the parks and the buildings themselves. I mean, one of the things as a former plant manager, if I wasn't putting 5% of my um, budget back into my facilities, I wouldn't have anything to run after a few years. And I can tell you there's some deficiencies in Dan's world. We've had assessments uh, done of all, all the facilities, and uh, we had a boiler fail in the courthouse just last week. So, you know, there's a whole lot of priorities. We have some are more immediate than others. And uh, we listen, we hear, we empathize with the situation that folks have. But trying to spread that money around uh, the best we can um, it, it is a tough, tough task like that. Right. Well, thank you. We have, a, we have about five minutes. I'm going to do a little rapid fire here on some of these other questions. Uh, having said, there are limited, and obviously you have to have priorities and there's limited funding. But this question goes to, to any plans for increased new recreational opportunities in Beaver County. You talk about attractive people in Beaver County, that's one way. Anything uh, in the works on that score? So um, right now we are trying to take care of the cosmetic stuff. Um, this is my, my viewpoint of it. We're putting a new road in at Brush Creek Park. It was very, it was needed uh, pretty bad. It's 
three quarters of a million dollars. Uh, there is a new playground being put in um, at Brush Creek, and that is that was done by a group of people who went out and got secured three different grants for twenty-five thousand dollars to be able to put back into the park. Um, but you know, we, we were addressed just recently about pickleball. You know, I think with this this commission, that I don't want to keep going back to this commission, but this commission is going to focus. There might be a subcommittee focusing on that. You know, whether we need soccer fields or whether we need new baseball fields. Right. Um, the comprehensive plan does have items in it that we would like to do, but once again, it all comes down to funding. Yeah, and I can't wait to see who volunteers for the pickleball. Committee. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I, I agree with Dan. I mean, there's a lot of physical things we, we have to do. I just sort of a good idea from Terry Metro about starting an intramural uh, sports program that, that's a volunteer base and can coordinate stuff. Uh, I think everybody knows, you know, Dan, his background and mine as well. Uh, th those quality of life amenities, those things that are going to attract and retain people are extremely important to us. And, and the recreation is one of them. I have a long list of things I'd love to see. I still haven't given up on a riverfront amphitheater, but you know, there, there's all kinds of recreational and entertainment things that I think we can work on uh, as, as we go forward. Let me ask you about roads. Uh, this question references townships like Independence, where there's been so much pipeline work in rural areas where roads were in poor condition to begin with. The roads are now falling apart. Uh, worries about uh, school buses and the like. I mean, what are your priorities? What do you see as a priority for uh, transportation needs in this county going forward this year? Uh, we, we've had a lot of discussion on it. The fact of the matter is, with county owns maybe four miles of, of, of actual road uh, in Beaver County. So, so it's really not under the county's purview uh, to get this done. That said, we've been advocating for a uh, federal transportation bill to be passed that brings federal dollars in to make sure uh, 376 and all of our um, arteries in, into that uh, are well maintained. We've also been lobbying the state. I know the state's thinking about a new version of uh, Act 89 to try and continue to fund uh, the roads and bridges. We've made good progress on some of the bridges. Yeah. Um, apparently, Bridge 52, which. Uh, <laughs> The county numbers are hard. I have no idea where Bridge 52 is. <laughs> Somebody just gave us a report saying Bridge 52 is. <laughs> okay, whatever. But, uh, you know, it, it is a high priority. We, and we know we have several pinch points, uh, five points in Broadhead Road, um, uh, Route 51, uh, what Mario's trying to do in Manhattan with a roundabout. We're, we're engaged in supporting and lending our support to those, but we don't have a whole lot of bottom line uh, dollars to be able to do anything about those. Do either of you support further school district consolidation? This is another question that really it doesn't fall underneath the purview of, of the commissioner, but I've said it publicly at this event before. I'll say it again that yes, I do. Uh, I think it's important that we offer the best public education, whether it's through charter or through public schooling, brick and mortar, that we can in Beaver County. And I think this also goes back to the partnership with their studies that they have done that we bring to the table for the commission. Uh, hopefully we can take it to the superintendents, but at the end of the day, this doesn't necessarily fall underneath the purview of us, but yes, we support, I support it. Uh, I, I, here's what I support. I, I support equitable educational opportunity for every student in Beaver County to get the right preparation for life and a career pathway that they possibly can. And right now, uh, we do not have an equitable distribution of educational opportunity in our 14 current school districts, uh, so we need to do something. I don't have a solution for that. Some could be tuition-based stuff, some could be more charters, some could be less charters. I don't know what the final solution is to that, but what I'm in favor of, as a grandfather of a 12-year-old uh, that's gone to Blackhawk uh, Middle School, uh, and as a former employer, we need to invest in education in a way that it's equal across the entire county. And right now we have an equal educational opportunity in my mind. Are both of you confident that uh, the 2020 election systems in place here in Beaver County will be safe and secure for voters? Absolutely. I, that was a, a very long, uh, drug out, decision uh, that, that we had to make. And as I said in my opening remarks about our director, Dorian Yanditti, 
she did a great job. Um, you know, I think I had to pull her arm a little bit more than than what uh, she wanted to about going to paper ballots. But I think the decision that we made ultimately was the right one. We saw, you know, I think we were one of the first in southwestern Pennsylvania. We're starting to see the other counties go back to paper ballots. One because we know that the paper ballots are secure; they're in a secure place. Um, the voter is the one who is in charge, as everyone knows here, to put that into the scanner. Um, and I think we made the decision we made, we could always expand on it. If we decide next year that we want to go back to the full face front electric voting machine, we can still go out and purchase those for the millions of dollars that they cost, and you'll still get the printed out, and you're still going to have to scan. So we have the scanners in place right now. So at the time, it was the right financial decision, and it, yes, I believe that it's secure. Right. Second and the last question. We all know what Mayor Bill Peduto said about our about the chemical petrochemical industry, who fracking. <laughs> <laughs> the question is asking: Is there anything you can do? Are you first of all, are you worried about comments like that from the mayor of Pittsburgh? Does it have any impact on Beaver County? Uh, is there anything you can do to counteract words like that? So, um, our our office, Commissioner Abley. When she was in office, uh, Commissioner Dale put out a press release, and uh, we had roughly 30 county commissioners, uh, council members from Allegheny County, Rich Fitzgerald signed off on it in support of the industry coming to southwestern Pennsylvania. Um, you know, of course, Mayor Peduto, you know, he's going to make those comments because he represents the city of Pittsburgh. Where are they going to build a petrochemical industry at in the city? It's an industry that's not going to come to his region or his his jurisdiction. So, you know, at the end of the day, Mayor Peduto, whoever the mayor will be in the future, they're going to benefit from the petrochemical industry too with the downstream and ancillary jobs. So, you know, I think all we can do is reach out to the people who make those decisions. You know, the, the press release that was put out was sent out to all the natural gas industry, all the petrochemical industry, uh, the new players that potentially could be coming to southwestern PA, Ohio, West Virginia to know that Southwestern PA supports their industry and we support it stronger. Jack? Yeah, thank you, Dan. Um, you know, obviously I worked in that industry for 35 years, you folks know that. I have great faith and confidence uh, in the brilliant people that I worked with inside those fence lines all those years. The technology that's being used, the care that's being done, what, what I reject with, with the people who are anti-cracking, anti-cracker plan is, is the premise that they think they're deliberately, willfully coming in and trying to kill us all. Well, guess what? My kids went to the same schools. I'm breathing the same air. I'm drinking the same water. Uh, I'm not into committing suicide. So, you know, the idea that somehow this is a deliberate, uh, it, well, I don't want to say. Yeah, Bernie Sanders it, uh, accused me of being part of a criminal enterprise in one of the debates I heard which was news to me. It wouldn't have been news to my father who worked also 30 some years in the oil and gas industry. Uh, that industry is vital and important to what we're doing. I have a great understanding and empathy for those people that have uh, children who have uh, uh, childhood asthma, have breathing problems, and their concerns about the air and the quality of, of life and water. Trust me, I, I understand I have that. I, I've got family members. Uh, that are concerned about that and the impact. But I believe in aggregate and the way things are being done uh, that I have great confidence that, that we're not going to destroy the quality of life and the environment we have. So I kind of disagree. And then, ironically, there was just an article in the New York Times where Peduto uh, and Fetterman and a bunch of other uh, folks say that an outright ban on fracking would be too much uh, of a hit on the Pennsylvania uh, economy, and they are in favor of all out bans on fracking like uh, New York has done. Right. So, it, even I think the mayor, I understand his point of view, I understand what he was trying to say. He was in front of a bunch of environmentalists that, you know, he was feeding some red meat to, uh, you know, that they ate up uh, pretty quickly. But even he understands there's a moderation in that, and, and right. there's uh, benefit. Well, thank you both for your comments, and thank you all for your questions. We got through a lot of them, not all of them, but almost all of them, and I appreciate that. Let me ask the last one word, one word answer. When we gather here next year, what is the one word you would like to be able to say about the state of Beaver County? 
Jack? Uh, unified. Unified. Advancement. Advancement. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for our And now back to our awesome president. You might get a laugh out of this one. I issue myself a yellow card and a red card. Because you see, it's not a good, wise plan to leave out one of your sponsors when you make announcements. So I am embarrassed to say I left out the good folks from MGE. They are based out of Moon Township and, and in the environmental um, membership category. I'm very apologetic. I will throw myself out of this building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that, John, thank you for your moderation. Again, really appreciate it. Um, commissioners, Chairman, uh, thank you for your willingness to, uh, to take the hard questions and being here. I, I thank everyone for being here and wish you a terrific day. Thank you. Thank you.